Hello everybody and I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious, perfect, well done T-bone steak. And I got a special treat for you guys. I'm going to make a, lo a Thermidor sauce similar to a lobster Thermidor sauce but it's going to be with no lobster, just the Thermidor sauce which we're going to put on the steak. And I'm also going to show you how to make that along with the quick quick margarita recipe that's so easy to make with a little secret ingredient so starting with our t-bone steak how to make a juicy well done t-bone steak now you've seen a lot of videos where people show their different recipes you know of course you need your salt and pepper what I usually do is I use not regular white salt or sea salt I use seasoning salt because it's got a better variety mixture and it has a more of a kick more of a flavor and then you know your regular pepper hit it really good pat it down like everybody does when I was a chef at the Baba Turtle in Angel Leagues this is how I made my award-winning steaks flip it over hit it again and put a lot of it on because a lot of this is going to come off when it's cooking so you want some good flavor along with your salt get seasoning salt that's mixed you can buy it in the stores that way you don't have to make it give it a good rub rub a dub dub and your steak is ready these onions are going to be for something else it's going to be for the Thermidor sauce which is going to go on this delicious steak and you are going to love it okay now we're going to continue with more seasonings you're going to add rosemary sprinkle the rosemary pat it down flip it over sprinkle more rosemary Pat it down, leave it, and you've got to use sage. Sage will make a big difference in this delicious flavor. It's a powder, you pour it on, pat it down, flip it over, more sage, pat it down, leave it. Now garlic you can use the crushed garlic or I prefer garlic powder just because it's quicker you're gonna add some garlic on it on the meat I don't really like too much garlic some people love garlic but I use a little because if you overdo garlic uh, you know you will be tasting garlic but if that's what you're into the more for you you gotta kick in some thyme Thyme adds a lot of flavor. This steak is going to be boiling with flavor. Now, since I'm in a little hurry, what I would recommend you doing is do this and keep it overnight in the refrigerator. Now, don't forget your parsley. I'm going to add a little bit of parsley just on one side because I've got parsley in the Thermidor sauce and marjoram you need marjoram let me flip this over a little bit of marjoram on one side it's a very strong spice you don't want to use too much marjoram and that's it now we're going to go over to put it in the oil in our pan okay everybody now you're gonna get a good strong skillet and cast iron you is the only way to make a steak you're gonna put it at medium high look at the flame see how high that is it's got to be high and always use olive oil don't use vegetable oil ever when you make a steak. Olive oil, any kind of olive, olive oil will work. And let that get heated up. 
and we're going to drop our steak when this is heated up. It'll heat up in a minute here because it heats up real, real quick on a skillet at full fire. Now you want to drop that steak when it's sizzling and ready to go because it'll kick in that flavor in the meat right away and it looks really really good as it cooks. I can't wait to show you that Thermidor sauce. If you're not gonna have a, like a special sauce with your steak, always do a Thousand Island. People love dipping their steak in Thousand Island. I, I personally don't like A1 steak sauce or any of those other type of sauces. I just don't like the flavor. If I'm doing a barbecue, that's gonna be when I cook a steak outside. That's always good for the summer or parties, gatherings. But personally, I like Thousand Island or Thermidor sauce is my favorite over the steak. And you're gonna see what this is all about, folks. Okay, here we go. We're gonna bring in our juicy steaks. It's got all the seasonings that I mentioned before. We're gonna drop them in the pan. It's got to fry loud. Give it a little tilt. You know what's great about a skillet? You can hold the handle and the handle never gets on. We're gonna save these onions for the thermidor sauce. But let me get the pan out of the way in that wood before we start a fire. You're gonna go on each side on a T-bone five to six minutes. Some people like to mean a little burnt and crispy. I wouldn't do it. It's not healthy. And healthy, it's just not a good thing to do. I'm gonna go into a few things about steak that I've learned from a lot of the doctors and people in the medical profession, which always tell me don't eat a steak, especially red meat, because it causes, you know, it clogs your arteries, causes cancer, all that stuff, which is true. My doctor says eat it once or twice a month, eat it well done. You can avoid a lot of that. Among your regular diet, always try to eat healthy. This Thermidor sauce is very rich, very fattening, so I do it like once, maybe twice a month. So we'll let that cook. And five minutes, let me go six minutes. I don't need a thermometer, all that testing stuff, because I'm, I've done this so many times. I know how long it's gonna take. Oh, I could put the steak blindfolded, in medium wear, well, uh, or just rare, and you I know how long it takes. Huh? You put it on the oven. I don't need to put it on the oven. A lot of people do that to savor the flavor. You can do that, but you really don't need to. We did that in the restaurant, but it took a lot of time. I prefer to just cook it like this and give it a good flipping over. I also don't tilt the meat sideways, you know, like they always show you, like you burn the fat. Why would you want to waste time doing that? Just cut the damn fat off. You're not supposed to be eating that fat anyways. And I recommend people don't eat fat on a steak or anything. It's really bad for you and it's not healthy to eat fat. It's actually bad enough you're eating this. But who can give up a good steak? Anyways, as that sizzles, I'm gonna give it a few more minutes and we're gonna start on the Thermidor sauce while the steak is cooking. The Thermidor sauce, also I'm gonna speed this cooking video for you guys so I don't bore you. The Thermidor sauce, I'm gonna flip the camera over while the meat cooks and uh, we're going to scoot this over here, the camera, and we're going to throw in a spoonful of butter, let that cook. We're going to start throwing in ingredients, folks, right and left, okay? The first thing I'm going to do on the Thermidor sauce, I like my onions thicker. The first thing i got to cook is the onion, because the onion will add the most flavor. Let that go in there. Let it cook. Kind of mix up the butter. Steaks are cooking really, really good. We're gonna take these steaks out after I flip them over. 
and I'm going to show you a secret how to have a juicy, 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 perfect steak. If you're trying to get a steak cooked on a pan and you want it juicy, it's not easy to do. Let's just flip this over. Now what I do on this, which I love to do when I'm cooking a steak, it's a little secret. You don't really need it as I add a little bit of water. And believe it, when you add a little bit of water, it's going to sizzle, but it's going to make the food a really, really juicy. And uh, we won't be cooking the steak that long. Now, let's switch over to the Thermidor sauce, which is going to go on your delicious steak. We got the onions cooking, everything at high. Now, here's what we're going to do, folks. With the onions, we're going to throw in half a cup of mushrooms. Or the whole thing, depending on what you're cooking for. We're going to let that cook. Kind of give it a good mixing. This is going to get smaller as it cooks. So, fry that in. It's got butter. I don't put oil on the Thermidor sauce, only on the steak. No oil is needed on this. You can fry it in butter and it has more flavor. Let that cook. And I'm going to show you guys the trick. We'll have a juicy steak, but it's going to be even more juicy when you see me when pour the sauce on the meat. Let that cook. Hi. You can get a knife and also cut down these mushrooms a little bit. You know, mushrooms, you just, all you got to do is push them and they cut. And then, uh, not too small because if they're too small, they're going to cook too fast. So we'll get that in there and get it cooking. Get a little bit more butter in there. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Steaks are almost done. And it came out perfect. Now I'm going to take these steaks out. Put them back on our pan. Make sure you rinse the wood your steak wasn't originally on. Because there was blood on it and so forth. You don't want any of that stuff on your meat. Give it a good rinsing. The onion. And uh, it's cooking really good with the mushrooms. Let's go over to the steak. Let's take the steak out. There we go. Let's turn off the uh, cast iron. Look at that steak, folks. Look at that steak. Is that beautiful? Let me bring this camera back. Give you a photo of a beautiful steak. Mm, yum, yum. Yeah, it looks good. No, now, now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this steak in slices. Now, people that like medium rare, this is the most perfect medium rare you can get. But like I said, I like my meat a little bit more well done. So if you like your meat well done, but you still want it juicy, all you're going to do, so let me cut one of them. I don't want to bore you cutting both of them up. I saved the bone for the dog. My dogs do cartwheels when I give them these steaks. But before I give it to them, the bone, I rinse a lot of that seasoning off because it's not good for the dog. Let me cut it. They always say cut the meat away one way or the other. It, it, which is a bunch of bullshit. Cut the damn meat any way you want it. Meat's meat. You're going to cook it, soak it, 
smothered in delicious sauce and you're going to eat it. And one of your dogs watching already. And my dogs are watching. Now, you see how I cut that meat? Now watch what I do. We're going to go ahead and cut the other one too. And uh, if you want to serve it medium well like this, the more to you. People love medium well, but I don't like rare medium well because doctor told me it causes cancer and a lot of other stuff. So I don't like, I don't believe in red meat. I can never eat red meat. So what I do is, that's just my preference. I'm not being sarcastic. But I've read too many horror stories and enough is enough. And I'm 55 and I need to eat as healthy as I can. Now, this meat's pretty much cut up, ready to cook a little bit more. Back in the pan you go. Let's scoot over to this for one second. Let's scoot over to our vegetables, our onions and mushrooms are looking good. Now remember, I'm making that thermidor sauce. The only thing that the difference between a lobster thermidor sauce and just a thermidor sauce is the lobster stock and lobster. Other than that, if you're not using lobster, lobster stock, it's just a thermidor sauce. And let me tell you, you can make a delicious sauce for the steaks the same way as you would lobster thermidor. Just with the. So what we're gonna do with that? Now that the mushrooms are getting rosy and brown. I don't want to overcook my onions and mushrooms. I don't like it like that when it starts getting at a burnt level. I like it cooked just enough where it's ready to add flavor. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add parsley. Throw the parsley in there. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to add a can of diced olives. A whole can. I got to dice that up. The pan is cooking. Let that mix up a little bit. Cook a little bit. And then I'm going to shoot back to the meat. Look at this. It's cooking. Now I'm going to lower it to medium so I don't start a forest fire. Put that meat back in the pan just a little bit. and kind of give it a swirl. I did forget. This is how you're going to make it a little bit juicy, folks. And you're going to add a little bit more water. The water makes it tender. Makes it, makes it more tender. Yeah. You want to cook it with water, a little bit of butter. But you don't want to overcook this meat because it's going to be hard to chew. You've got to keep it moist, but you want well done, juicy steak. This is how you do it. You can't cook a whole steak and keep it that way and expect it to be juicy. It's really hard to cook a whole steak and serve it juicy. The best thing I'd recommend if you want to do it that way is to marinate it overnight. But trust me, when you cook it, it's going to come out the same way. Now, this meat is pretty much well done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take it and put it on a plate. I throw it right on the middle. I wouldn't make the slices all pretty for you, but me and my wife, and she's starving. And I'm ready to eat her dinner. I'm so hungry. Turn the stove on. Put the meat right in the middle. All that's cooking good. Just add a little bit more butter. Add that right in the middle. Give me your plate, dear. Because it's disappearing. Okay, that is done. Now look, folks. Look at this. This is the way I served it the velvet turtle. You know, and this is the way, here's your plate, like that. 
course it's going to be clean and presentable, but we're at home, so we don't care about the prettiness. <laughs> Either do the dogs. They worry about how quick it's going to be okay, served. Now it's on the... Okay, so now we're done with the meat. You've seen the beautiful meat. Looks like it's at a five-star restaurant. That's how you serve it. Well, let's go over to the vegetables and the Thermidor sauce. Because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more butter. Now, folks, when you cook this kind, these kind of meals, you got to cook fast and know what you're doing. Or things can mess up real quick. Now, put a little bit more butter. Because I want these vegetables to cook really, really good together. We got parsley, diced, diced olives, mushrooms, and the uh, onions cooking more and more. Okay, so that's cooking. Now, I'm going to turn the fire up, full blast, so it cooks faster. Give it another minute or two before we throw in our other ingredients. Now, once that's in there, cooking like that, I add dill weed. I like to add dill weed after I put the cream because the flavor is delicious. Let that cook. Let the flavors kick in. There we go. Tastes even better. Huh? Now on the Thermidor sauce, I you can use flour if you want it really thick. I don't like using flour because it comes out usually too thick. At the Velvet Turtle and Angelique's, I, I never use flour. <laughs> And what I'm going to do now, we have way more than enough seasoning on the meat. What I'm going to do now, is I'm going to pour in my heavy cream. You get pure cream, half a bottle, pour it in, like that. Let it simmer. Well actually, I'm going to keep it high a little bit, so it cooks. Stir it. Heavy whipping cream. You want to know a secret? Use two different kinds of whipping cream. I don't want to mention the names, whipping cream, but use two of the top brands and mix them together. And I'm telling you, it comes out even better that way. As that's cooking, you're going to give it a kick of the white wine. <coughs> white wine. <coughs> Just a little kick like that. Her flavor. And the uh, Brandy. Brandy. It's about a half a shot. I ran out of brandy, so or I'll put a little bit more. But the secret to this dish, everybody, is sweet vermouth. Sweet vermouth. Give it a kick. Sweet vermouth. Show it the And no, I don't want to show bottles and brands and names because I'll start getting sued by companies and Offers, why didn't you show my brand and all that crap? I don't want to go do that. <laughs> um, if they want to call me, we'll make a deal. But I don't like doing that. And I don't want to hurt the other company's feelings by not mentioning theirs and then so forth. It happens all the time. It starts a little riot. I don't need any more riots. I have enough dogs to deal with that. And a possum and a turtle and a cat. We have a lot of rights in our house. Okay, so it's bubbling beautifully. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get your four cheese, okay? Your four cheese, sprinkle that around, put a, a good portion of the four cheeses, always the four cheese, Monterey Jack, Colby, you know, and then you know you want your regular American. That's a really fat thing. It's fattening, it's fattening gets. As that cooks, Kind of give it a stir. Folks, this is so easy to make. It, it, I mean, it's just an incredible thing to make. Now I'm going to add my my beautiful dill weed. Dill weed will add more flavor. And remember, when you're adding seasonings and flavors, add whatever you want. This is the basic, what we need to make this dish. Now, when you're working in a five-star restaurant, chefs, we chefs in the back are going overtime doing the t that's why we get fat because we're doing so much taste testing to make sure it's perfect we do it without even thinking that we're doing it i give it a quick taste and then i know what it needs let me give it that taste 
Um, near perfect. I need a more butter. No, you need to add a pepper. I need more vermouth. It's got enough. Give it some more stirring. Mix up that butter. See, when you cook this on the light, it just thickens faster and it mixes better. Isn't that pretty, folks? I know it's a little messy. We're over in Oahu, so it's a mess. And I'm over here, supposed to be enjoying myself, and here I am making a damn cooking video. I'm not really into pork, folks. I mean, if you like pork, go for it, bake it, whatever. I'm just not into pork. It's not a religious thing. I just don't really like pork. My wife's Philippines, they love pork. A lot of I'm Latino, I'm supposed to be eating pork more than Filipinos, but I don't really like it because I know it's not good for you. No, I don't eat pork. Mm -mm. And um, Beef is lost two friends to heart attacks, and they were big pork eaters, they were big meat eaters, and everything else. And at 55, you look at life different and you get scared to death about everything. So, we give another taste test. Mmm. Delicious. Excellent. That's why I eat this dish once a month. Maybe twice a month. Because my wife's not watching me. A little bit more change. Because this food is absolutely irresistible. Do this, folks. Make it like this. Please. It's messy. I'm not professional. I've got my meat. I've got my mess. And we do things here like slobs, but the more slobbery the better. You put it over. Now I'm going to turn that off. Let it, and as, it, as you turn it off and, it's, and it cools off, it thickens too. What I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to show you my beautiful well done meat. Now look at this. The meat is well done. And uh, let me cut a piece so the people. The meat is well done. And it's extra, extra juicy. So you get that meat in the middle. When you have a party, do it this way. Get your meat in the middle. I'm going to actually show you a trick. It, it immediately starts thickening when it's off. I'm going to show you a trick we do in the restaurant. Get that. See how it thickens? It looks like stroking up almost. The taste is unbelievable, folks. You get it? You got your mushrooms. You get that and you just pour it on that meat. No dipping here. We get down to business and we eat. You go like that. You make it pretty. And it's just wonderful. I'm going to do Kimberly's. Look at this. Look at this. This is what you do in the five-star restaurants. When you put a leaf over it and make it pretty and clean the plane like you're doing a commercial. But here we're starving. And we're ready to eat. No, Just like that. I wouldn't have that on the side like that. In a restaurant... But well, when you have guests over to your house, if it's family or friends, you'd be terrible. You know, in a restaurant, you go like this. You know, you wipe the damn plate, make it look all pretty. Go like that with paper towel. And it's got to be nice and lovely. I'm just doing this for a joke. None of that. None of that. Then you wipe it with your paper towel. Go like that. Go like that. You know, so forth. And then what you do... You get your little messy areas and you kind of push the sauce over it. So it looks like it was just a sauce. Instead of your beer that you spilled over it while you were cooking. And then, like that. And then, ta-da. 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 There's your beautiful, beautiful... Steak Thermidor. Steak Thermidor. Well done steak, T-bone with sliced with thermidor sauce. Delicious, delicious, 
And this is how you keep your wife happy. You do all the cooking. She does the watching and the complaining and the criticizing and the whining and you get along just fine that way. Okay, over and out. Keep on staying. Terminar sauce. Good night, everybody. I'm going to eat. I will do one thing to make you guys all, all you viewers mad. I'll do a little taste bite. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Good stuff. Over now, thanks for watching, subscribe. And like. Email me if you want any more recipes. I'll give you the Velvet Turtles best recipes in the world. Five star restaurants. We'll put in the and Angelique's. Over now, not everybody. Look at this beautiful mess. That's a five star restaurant dinner that you made in 20 minutes in your house with tomato sauce. This sauce is absolutely incredible. If you want a stronger kick, add more cognac, white wine flavoring. You can always do more brandy, but sweet or sweet vermouth. Over and out. Subscribe. Good night, subscribe. And uh, we're going to eat now. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.